your country can do for you and what you can do for your country. country, country. Hello, America! Live from the KVOI studio in Tucson, Arizona, welcome to Speak Up America. Speak Up America, dedicated to a return to our Constitution as written by our forefathers, the return of common sense in our laws, and the proliferation of environmental truth. Now, here's your host, Chuck Diaz. Hello, Tucson! Chuck Diaz here with Speak Up America, the radio show. The TV show. We're actually filming it here again. Uh, and actually, I'm lucky to be here. Um, last week when I when I started up, I said I hadn't been here since January. And it's because I had a couple of heart attacks and a, and a stent and a pacemaker. Well, guess what? I was back in the hospital this Wednesday. And uh, they had to move the pacemaker from where it was to another place because my body and it weren't getting along. And it was causing me a lot of discomfort. I won't say pain, but a lot of discomfort. But the people at the hospital were really, really great. My doctor is really great. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Chuck Diaz. Chuck Diaz, D-I-A-Z. Sounds like I'm from Mexico, right? Well, I was born in South Central Los Angeles. My mom was from Mexico. And uh, we were very happy to call ourselves Americans of Mexican descent. As I pointed out last week, the people, you know, this Latino, Hispanic, and Mexican-American, you know, it doesn't fly with me. Um, I think those are new age terms. They are terms that were made up by, uh, by liberalism in the United States. Anybody who doesn't want to call himself an American, my God, you know, so many people over over the years, you know, have come here. And again, like I said last week, Italians changed their last names, Polish changed their last names, Jewish people that came over, a lot of countries, a lot of people from a lot of countries in, in Europe came over here and changed their last names so it would sound more American. They wanted to be Americans. American was supposed to be, you know, was what it was all about. Being born in 1937, me, means that I've got a, uh, I don't know, maybe a different perspective than a lot of people out there, especially a lot of the younger people out there that have on, on, on America. You know, you're being taught all the all the pimples and warts about America in school. You're not being taught of all the great things that happen. I doubt that they teach you about the Renaissance in, in Europe uh, any longer. Anyway, I heard that. But you really, when you really come down to it, let's set aside the bad stuff for now. Okay, and and talk about the American people. Who were they? Who created America? The entire world created America. You might say that America is a gift to the entire world because people from all over the world came here. They came here for one reason: freedom, opportunity, the uh, 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 an opportunity to build, be able to build themselves. In the first 110 years, 120 years of this country, more people were, were rose out of poverty than than at any other time in the world's history. Why is that? Because of one thing, our Constitution. And a lot of people don't understand our Constitution. They, uh, the liberals do. They want to get rid of it. They want to change it. They want to convince you that it's, you know, it's just an old piece of paper that was written 200 years ago and all this kind of stuff like that. But it's not. It defines freedom. In fact, when I, I wrote this book called The Charter of Negative Liberties, I'm showing it to the TV audience, okay? Charter of Negative Liberties. I, I, wrote it, I, I wrote it when I heard President Obama say this. The generally the Constitution is a charter of negative liberties, says what the states can't do to you, says what the federal government can't do to you, but it doesn't say what the federal government or the state government must do on your behalf. The All right. That's where he and our forefathers have a difference of opinion. When they wrote the Constitution, they didn't want the federal government to do anything on our behalf. They wanted to make sure that the that Washington D.C. did not turn out to be King George the Third again. They didn't want central power the way the way it's grown over the past a uh, well, hundred years. Probably started with Wilson. Okay. 
when the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, and that's all I'm going to talk about right now. I'm not going to talk about the, 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 the Civil War amendments. I want to talk about the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. When they, when they, when they ratified that, they came into, came into you know, law. All right? It was not the law of the land. In a way, it was. But it was all about the law of restricting Washington, D.C. Read the Constitution. It, it's a boring read, but uh, because the Constitution itself is basically a organizational structure, and it's a you know policies and procedures and some rights and responsibilities, but it doesn't say one thing about any American citizen having to do anything. Not one thing. There is not one law in the Constitution that says an American citizen must do this or can't do this. There is not a law in the Constitution that says an American citizen must do anything. Now, that means that they didn't want any federal laws. People were free. They were free to go wherever they wanted. Stick, you know, dig a hole and, and find oil. Dig a get, dig, get, get, find gold. They were. This land was free to them. And during that 110 years, following following the, the ratification of the Bill of Rights, this country grew. My God, it grew. It grew into the uh, 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 one of the most powerful countries in in the world. All because the people were free to do so. Not being told what to do by 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 Washington D.C., but here's what Obama thinks about that. Now, just as there was in Teddy Roosevelt's time, there's a certain crowd in Washington who, for the last few decades, have said, "Let's respond to this economic challenge with the same old tune." The market will take care of everything, they tell us. If, if we just cut more regulations and cut more taxes, especially for the wealthy, our economy will grow stronger. Now, it's a simple theory. And, and we have to admit, it, it's one that speaks to our rugged individualism and our healthy skepticism of too much government. That's, that's in America's DNA. And that theory fits well on a bumper sticker. But here's the problem. It doesn't work. It has never worked. Now you listen to that, and, and, and the man says that the Constitution has never worked. It doesn't work. You know, it, it, it has never worked. How did this country grow the way it did? How did this become the richest nation in the world? How did this become the, the, the country that has helped more countries than any, any, other, any other country in the history of the world? Because the Constitution does work. Constitution run over by him. Take a break. <laughs> 